All right, we are back with a new tutorial. Today we are recreating this card effect right here, which is the 100th day of the 100 day editing school. So a special one. That's why I'm also doing this video. So let's jump straight into Resolve and get started. Okay, so we are here in DaVinci and for this effect you need two clips. The first one is this effect where you throw the card. This is what it looks like. This is the card throw effect. Like this, you don't have to throw the card, but it's enough to yeah pretend to throw it. And the second one is this clip, where I put the clip here on my phone, played it back and then filmed this shot where I ma already matched the movement of the card. So I, I pull back the camera so that it matches with the movement of the card. And I also shot it in slow motion, as you can see so that I can now uh, do a bit of speed ramping to create a smoother transition. So that's the first thing we're gonna do, just press Command and R, then maybe create a speed point here. And I shot it in 60 frames, so it's already half the speed. And what I'm gonna do now is make this part here faster. And now we go into the retime curves and also ease them a bit like this. This you don't have to do, you can also just use the movement you do in camera, but if you shoot in slow motion and then do it like this, you get a little bit more control. All right, so the next step is matching the movements. And for this, we will put the two clips on top of each other. So to now line them up, we're just gonna reduce the opacity and then align the two clips. So yeah, no, I think now, now it's lined up perfectly. Okay, so let's bring back the opacity and then we will highlight the two clips and create a new fusion clip. Let's open this in fusion. We don't need the background. We only need these two and let's also rename them. This is the phone and this is the throwing. What's important now is that the phone is connected uh, here on the background input so that we can uh, line up the throw video on the phone. So let's drag this a bit back and add a DVE effect. And what we're gonna do now is yeah, just manually line it up. Let's open it like this. For this we will use the, of course, the <coughs> position, but also the, the rotation here, as you can see. And this really is just trial and error. And you, you can do this also with 3d tracking but in this case it's it's just the easiest way to keyframe it because it also doesn't need to be perfect so yeah i'll keyframe this and then i'll see you again okay it's lined up decently it does not have to be perfect because now we're gonna fade the edges for this we will use a a rectangle so let's connect it and then if you select this clip and press one and then open the double viewer, you can see it here on the left side. Then increase the width and height of this rectangle. And then make the edges a bit softer. And as you can already see, it's, it's fading the edges here. Like this. Yeah, something like this. You see, it, it's not really visible. Of course, like this you see it, but if you don't know that there's a clip here on top, you wouldn't notice. That's it for the lineup and now the next step is to do this for the entire clip. So make sure that the DVE is selected and then make a keyframe for everything you changed. Then go forward a couple of frames and you can see that now because the camera moved it's not lined up perfectly anymore. So, so to fix this just select the DVE and reposition the clip. So let's do this again, a couple frames forward, reposition it. You just need to go through everything and keyframe it. And from here on, we won't need the clip anymore because here I will throw the card. So what we're gonna do here is add a brightness and contrast node so we can fade out the clip like this. So let's go to here, create a keyframe, then go a couple frames forward and fade it out. Okay, and now here we need to reposition it one last time, but that's it. 
yeah that's what we need as a base video now the next step is to add another dve effect here after the merge node and we will use this one to make the clip which we put onto the phone here full screen so let's zoom in and again adjust the rotation and also the position so this is what it looks like and now we want to create a keyframe right here where the card will like go out of the screen so let's create keyframes for the things we changed then go a couple frames forward and reset everything so this was 0 0.5 this also 0 0.5 this I think one and the rotations should all be zero like this and if we now play it back we have this rough screen transition now the next step is to actually import our design of the card so I just downloaded this one from the internet or actually I took a screenshot and I'll open it here on the left side and also rename it quickly and as you can see this is yeah it's just a screenshot and what i'm gonna do now is just mask it out quickly with a rectangle so this is what it looks like so let's connect it to our clips like this and again add a dve effect so that we can animate and position it so let's go to the point in the clip where you can see the card a little bit and then we will take this card and line it up once again so let's make it smaller and then rotate it put it up here so we need to rotate it like this and here again it does not have to be perfectly lined up because the movement or the effect is gonna happen so fast that you can't really see any imperfections now let's create keyframes for the parameters once again so all the positions and all the rotations then let's go forward here and then make our card bigger and rotate it so we have the card in front of us in the middle somewhere here and you can already see what we've got but this is just the movement of the camera now it looks still unrealistic that's because we need to also rotate the card because if you throw it then the card is spinning and you can do this on the dbe effect directly but you will run into an issue later on when you want to add motion blur or yeah make the spin effect look more realistic so that's why we're going to rotate the, the card before the DVE effect. So let's add a transform node here, then open this on the left side and then make the card smaller. The reason why we do this is so that if we spin it, that we don't move out of the frame with the card. So you want to scale it down so you can rotate it and it stays in frame the entire time and then we will go to our initial position here and start to create the keyframe for the rotation of course now we might also have to scale it up a bit again then let's go to here and on the transform node we will just massively increase the the angle maybe to thousand or something this is what it looks like so you can see it actually looks quite okay but what i just what i'm realizing now is that it's kind of not flipped in the right direction so let's fix this and rotate it by 180 degrees like this and you can see that it now looks way more realistic now to make the, the rotation feel natural, we need the edges to be blurred out. So in order to get that, we will add a radial blur and we can open it here on the left side. And you can see if, if you increase the strength here, you, we get this, this perfect yeah, spin motion blur like this. So 
find a, an amount that looks good for you. But like this, the cart is of course basically spinning at the same speed all the time and also it's still just, yeah, here and not really uh, integrated into the shot. So we will quickly do this and what we do is create a brightness and contrast node here and again enable the alpha channel. Then we will decrease the gain, create the keyframe, go a couple frames forward like this and make the gain one. And you can see that now it looks pretty realistic. What I want to get now is the card to stop here for a moment. So it's standing still and not spinning. And to do this, we just need to keyframe the, the blur. So let's go here to the beginning. You can actually set the keyframe here and go a couple frames forward and then set the first keyframe to zero because here the card is of course not spinning. And then we make it spin. And let's create here another keyframe and another one and then reduce it to let's say 0.4, something like this. So it still has a bit of blur, but it's not fully, yeah, unrecognizable. And here, of course, we also want the card to be readable. So we will rotate it. And on the DVE, I will once again scale it up a little bit. And now we already have a really nice animation. So for the final effect I want the card to disappear and this is actually very easy. We just go to the transform node here and uh, make a keyframe for the size and then go a bit forward and then decrease the size to zero. So this is what we got and yeah this is the basic effect. There's only one more thing which I want to add and that's a lens blur this one here and the reason is that with this blur we can blur out everything behind the card so let's go to the point where the focus for the viewer is shifting to the card and create a keyframe for the blur size but set it to zero then go a bit forward and increase it to to four. Like this we get a really nice background separation. Okay and this is what the effect looks like now. So now it really depends on you. Maybe you want to add more things like a soft glow to the to the card so it like lights up and other effects but that's up to your creativity. The last thing which is necessary are the curves. Of course now it's like decent but it's very rough and not smooth at all. So now I'm gonna adjust the curves and sh show you what they look like in the end so you get a nice effect. And you will see that you can delete some keyframes and it will still look okay and the less keyframes you have the more of a clean or smooth movement it's gonna be so you don't need all the keyframes you set before so the dve1 was the like the, the the lineup of this clip with the phone which looks good enough now now let's do the same for the dve2 let's select all of them press f and maybe drag them out a bit so that it's uh, longer and smoother movement and then really make these curves smooth so let's quickly disable them so we get so we can actually see what they look like drag it out same for this one and same for the last one and if we now enable everything again and play it back, the movement is really smooth, seamless and nice.
that's it for the camera. Now we need to animate the card. This is the DVE3 effect. And here we once again got a lot of curves. So let's select all of them first and make them flat. And something that is missing now is that after we like slowed down the, the card, it should spin again for the disappear effect. This is on the transform node, so let's quickly open this one here in Fusion, uh, in the spline editor. Here we only need the angle. Let's create a keyframe here, so the card spins again. Okay, this looks decent, but now we also need to adjust the radial blur so that it um, increases again for the second movement. So let's have it back at 6.4 and it looks pretty good. Okay, so this is the movement which we got and yeah, that's it for the movement. Now we just need to bring back the background with the lens blur. So let's keyframe it keyframe for the blur size and another one so that it's again fully visible like this. So let's quickly pre-render it here so we can see the full quality and yeah this is what it looks like. So as you saw the effect is not extremely complicated but you need to do a lot of trial and error to find the right movements and positions for everything and to get very smooth curves and I hope you learned something if you have any questions or feedback as always let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.